Okay, this is probably kind of a niche DIY project, but still, maybe some of you get inspired by this to apply it to your own instrument, or you're just curious to see how and why I converted my beloved drum kit from this to this. Let me show you what I did here. So what's the deal here? Why do I even feel the need to change something about my kit? Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love my drum kit. It plays fantastic and it sounds absolutely amazing. Only when it comes to recording videos, I start to run into things that bug me here and there. So let me show you quickly what these things are. You see, whenever I'm finished with the drum recordings, I take apart almost the entire drum kit in order to have enough space for setting up the cameras with no obstructions for recording the guitars next. That means no cymbals, no cymbal arms, no tom mics, no toms, and no microphone stands for the overhead mics. I store all those parts in the corners of the studio so I can walk around and set up lights and cameras and all that. And once I'm done with recording guitars and bass, I set up everything again to be ready for the next project. Rebuilding the drums is not the problem, because thanks to the drum rack it takes only about 10 to 15 minutes and everything is back exactly as it was before. The struggle really is more about reattaching and repositioning all the mics and mic stands. And also since the positions are always slightly different, the drums also sound a bit different every time. The other thing that annoys me even more are the restrictions of camera placements because of, for example, the tom mics or the mic stands. You see, I always try to capture interesting angles of each instrument and I think especially with drums it looks really cool to get up close sometimes, but then there's always so little space anyway because of all the cymbals and rack gear that's needed and because of the microphones, even that limited space gets occupied and blocks the view. I try to minimize that with these 90 degree angled cables, but that doesn't really do much of a difference. Same thing goes with these mic stands for the overhead microphones. Whenever I want to have a camera angle from that direction, it is almost impossible not to have these stands somehow being distracting in the shot. So what I want to do is to come up with a DIY solution for micing the toms internally, get rid of these obstructing mic stands, and also I try to eliminate as many of the other mic stands on the kit as possible and get a cleaner workspace overall because I just hate to have all this here filled up with a bunch of stands and tons of cables. And while I'm at it, why not improve the looks of the kit as well? Let's do this. First step is to take apart everything on the drum kit including all mic stands and cables and leave only the bare rack. I also used this opportunity to cut down some excess pipes of the rack and some cymbal arms that were sticking out and were bothering me for a long time already. After that I started to take apart the tom mic mounts and stripping off the hardware on the first tom. With the countersink drill bit I carefully removed the flared air vent and tama badge. Then I marked a piece of masking tape and drilled two small holes for mounting the microphone. By mounting it as close to the top as possible and using short and small screws I tried to keep a low profile so it wouldn't look ugly and too amateurishly self-made. Then I drilled the biggest hole for the external XLR plug which will also be secured by two small screws. To improve the overall look of the drums I removed the rest of the hardware and cleaned the shelf from dust and dirt to wrap everything in a digital urban camo vinyl wrap that I've also used for various other projects in the past. It's kind of a fiddly process but with only even surfaces like on a drum it's not too complicated. Cutting out all the holes afterwards requires a bit more precision but since there will be hardware mounted inside the holes small mistakes can be covered up easily. Reattaching the Tama badge with a replacement vent was kind of tricky and I ended up using a big countersunk ball from the inside to flatten the flared vent. The result is not the prettiest but functional let's say and also nothing that will ever be visible in a close-up in one of my videos. I definitely should have done a better job measuring the size of the replacement air vent though. Then I attached the microphone and XLR plug to the shell and cut a very short cable to the exact length that I needed. With these specific XLR plugs there's actually no soldering required and the cables can be just screwed tight which made it a lot easier to work inside this little drum. Then it's just mounting everything together and the first drum is finished. Don't mind these little bubbles though, they are super easy to remove afterwards and practically invisible from afar, especially on such a camera pattern. So after knowing that the concept works, it's only a matter of repeating it for the remaining toms. One thing I found was that the bigger the tom was, the easier the miking process felt, but at the same time the wrapping got increasingly difficult and I actually messed up the stand tom a bit. Lucky for me it was exactly the spot under the right, so if you don't tell anyone, nobody will know. Wrapping the kick drums was definitely the toughest part, but since both kicks are the exact same size, I could use the good old copy and paste trick and save some time here. To remove the overhead 
isolate mic stands permanently, I screwed some mic mounts into the wooden ceiling and attached two extendable mic arms. Since the position of the drum kit itself will never change, I only need to adjust the overhead mics once and will never have to worry about them again. After setting up the modified drums, it's time to deal with the rest of the mic stands. For that I used some fairly inexpensive but good quality super clamps and mini magic arms by Small Rig, which are more commonly used in the photography and videography world, but I attached my mics with a small quarter inch to 3 8 adapter, knowing that those will not move from the vibrations while playing anytime soon. On the main hi-hat stand I also have a mount for my snare top mic and a second snare mic attached to another mic arm on a super clamp, which is only for my in-ear mix when practicing. Because I hated to have the floor covered in endless rolls of cables for all the microphones, I then cut every single cable to the precise length I needed. Now the very last step is to solder these extreme custom DIY cables, check if they work and connect them to the finished set. And here it is, the new and improved drum kit. As you can see, it looks much cleaner than before, no mic sticking out anywhere and also not that much stuff on the floor anymore. There will be plenty of videos in the future where you can see and hear it of course in full songs, but while you're here, let's check out a quick before and after comparison. So what do you think? Is there a noticeable difference in sound and if so, is it better or worse? And of course, how do you like the new look? Well I'm really excited to record the next video with this new setup, so let's cut it right here and I'll see you soon in the next one. Thanks for watching, bye guys.